So to take the, the trim off, just put your pin in here, vigorously. That's it. And then loose all your screws. So since today we're, it's all about mirrors, and I have a few requests to take this out and show how to install the, the mirror on, on the door. We are going to remove the panel, install the mirror. Well, I already installed it, but I'll show it to you again. And we are going to replace the wiring harness inside the door with the one that has the cable for the cameras and the warning uh, triangle. Don't forget to unplug the battery from the trunk since we're going to be dealing with sensors and maybe an uh, airbag and whatever we want. So it's better just to have it unplugged. And so here we go. I removed already the uh, speaker housing here. This one's pretty simple, especially if you're on a uh, 32 um, You just basically pull it out from the, the seal here. Just pull it up to break the stats. That's pretty much it. It's, uh, there's a foam rubbery thingy in the back. Uh, that's pretty much it. After that, we'll just have to remove this trim, which I don't have tools for. We're going to grab our favorite plastic trim tool, and underneath here, there's a little dent. I can't find it, but I swear it's there. Spray it up, and we go with some pink everywhere. So click. Stir it very gently. That's it. That's it. So this is held by these clips here. We have four, which are like one, two, three, four. This last one. I'll show you how to bring it back in. I think I'll probably show that in the video. Well, so this whole trim is held by basically two screws one up here and one down here.
I am not sure exactly what I was babbling about here, but I am pretty sure that I was just checking that everything was going on the right path for the wiring. Now, there was... Oh, no, wait, I remember what it was. So, there are two wires that go inside the door and between the glass on the outer side. So the routing of those wires is very important that you put it exactly how they were because either when you put the window down it's gonna get ripped off or they are not gonna let anything work. Those two wires belong to the uh, courtesy light that it's on the handle and the other one it's for the uh, sensor for the uh, door latch. So make sure that you have those two things in the right place before doing anything else. Okay, so once, once you have passed both cables on the driver and the passenger door, you're basically done. Um, the only thing is that you might notice that your fingernails are destroyed, your fingers might be numb, but it's okay. It's, it's part of the game, so you can chuck it out to experience. Um, then the next thing that we need to do is simply start coding. So as usual, we are going to connect to the car, pull the uh, FA and read it, read our modules, get all that stuff. So nothing new here. We are gonna do edit the FA and we're gonna select our options which are down all the way to the cell up by elements and we're gonna add the 5DL which is the surround view. We're gonna click apply then we're gonna calculate the FP and if you want to double check that it's there you open the options and scroll a little bit down and you'll see that it's right there 5DL there you go so we're gonna save by clicking the hard drive or I mean the, the floppy disk do S per mode go to the VCM and then we'll have our FA loaded if you want to double check and see that the option is still there you go scroll down and you'll see right there 5DL surround view. So that means we're good. So now we check that the file is loaded and we write the FAPP and you'll have a notice down there saying that it was written correctly and it's now saved to the car. Then we're going to go to coding and in the coding part we are just going to uh, accept that the uh, FA has changed and we're going to uh, code the TRSVC um, just by clicking code to defaults. If you don't have a CAFD file for that module because it has not properly coded, you just have to select the module, detect the CAFD for your SWE, obviously making sure that you have the I step same as the target as the car, so you have the data up there, and then you just code it as it is supposed to be. So when, the, when that checked, just code and everything is done. Then you wait until that's done. Keep scrolling all the way up. We are going to code the MBT or the iDrive. In my case, I have the Evo, which is MBT2. And that done, that only takes a few minutes. And the last one that we need to code is the FEM body, which controls the actual cameras. So now the car is coded and ready to go. And I want to apologize again for, first of all, being so late on this video and for the audio quality that I didn't know my microphone was disconnected and it was just terrible. I tried to recover most of it and files for the video got corrupt. I couldn't show you to the detail that I wanted to, but it's kind of straightforward. You just replace the wires, the old ones with the new ones, and the cameras just work. Um, so with that, I'm gonna close this short 
episode but next time i am gonna go in full depth about the pma so the parking maneuvering assistant which has two versions one is the one that just parallel parks and the other one is the one that uh, parks in reverse i will install the one that parks in both reverse and parallel so this one is gonna be even crazier than what we've done now um, so until next time i hope to see you again bye <music>